So actually, ladies and gentlemen, I said determine domain and range, but it's actually a little bit longer than that. You don't need to write it down because we're going to write it in there. But it's actually I want to talk about how to determine if something is a function or not, and then determine the domain and range if it is a function. So for it to determine for it to be a function, that means this has to be not true, right? So um, a lot of students remember, oh yeah, function vertical line test. And some people remember it, some people don't. Some people understand why the vertical line test works. Some people have no clue, but they just know how to do it. So let me try to explain the vertical line test the best, pay, the best way I can. Let's pick of x, no, it's not a point. Let's pick a value where x is equal to 2. Okay, At x equals 2, is there a point on this graph? These are all three curve different graphs. Is there a point on this graph where x equals 2? Yeah, so like right down here. Let's call it 5. So really, there is a point 2, comma 5. Negative 5, right? At, at 2, at when x equals 2, y equals negative 5. Does everybody agree with that? So what the function says is a relation where every input, so every x value, so this x value, has exactly one y value. Is, is negative 5 the only y value when x is equal to 2? Is there any other y values? No. no. OK. Um, so therefore, this is a function. So you could say, yes, this is a function, Mr. McLogan. Now, why does that work with the vertical line test? What the vertical line is, basically, if you were to graph the line x equals 2, that would create a vertical line. right? And what you guys can see is the vertical line is just a visual way for us to make sure that when x equals 2, there's no other points on the graph except for that 1. All right? Does that make sense? So what you basically can do is just go across and say, OK, my vertical line is not crossing my graph more than once. That means every x value has exactly one output or one y value. Uh, now let's go through the part that everybody has trouble with, domain and range. So let's go ahead and write the domain. As you guys can see this graph, now remember, domain is the set of all x values, right? x values is a, you know, are on the x-axis. So think left and right when determining the domain. Left and right, input x values. This graph is going down. The arrow tells it it's going to always go down. So as this graph goes down, it keeps on going to the left. How far is it going to go to the left as it goes on and on forever? Huh? Yeah, but how far? How far does that go? Like to negative a million? Negative two million? Negative infinity. So the domain is from negative infinity. And then as it goes to the right, how far is it going to go? Positive infinity. So you can write it like that, negative infinity to infinity. Or we could also say all real numbers. But I'm going to get you guys used to using um, set notation. Then we talk about the range. Range is the set of all y values. Think y-axis. Think up and down with the range. So we always start with the lower value. Think of the negative. So how far is this graph is going to the left? It's also going down. As it going to the right, it's also going down. So how far down is this graph going to go? Negative, negative infinity. And then how high does this graph go? Negative, negative 2. Now. This gets a little confusing because I'm going to use a bracket rather than a parenthesis. A bracket is telling us that the point negative 2 is contained. There is a value at negative 2. Infinity is not actually a, you know, a number, right? It represents the infinite slope of the line. So infinity cannot be contained. So, it's, so we use parentheses with this, OK? But when you have actually point, that's actually contained, all right? Um, so let's move on to the next one. As you guys can see in this one, if I choose the value x equals 2, when x equals 2, when x equals 2, you guys can see that there is more than one point when x equals 2. You guys agree with me? When x equals 2, you could have 1, 2, 3, 4, y equals 4. When x equals 2, it equals 1 and equals negative 3. So this graph contradicts our definition of a function because a function says every input, every x value, has exactly one y value. Well, now, when x equals 2, I have 1, 2, 3 y values, right? So it's not a function. Or if you wanted to use the vertical line test, 
you can see that the vertical line is good here, but once it crosses the function more than once, it's not a function. All right? And that's why the vertical line test works. All right, so that's not a function. All right, last one. Let's try to do this one over here. So the domain, remember, think left, right. Domain, left, right, when you're looking at a graph. Fall down. So how far to the left does this graph go? Negative 3. Is that contained or not contained? Contained. So it's a bracket. And then how far to the right is it going to go? Infinity, which is never contained. And then we have the range. Um, we always want to go how low it goes. So how low does this graph go? 2, positive 2, which is contained to infinity. And that's it. OK? Any questions? Okay. Yes? On the first graph, um, I got the domain part, the range part, negative infinity, but why does it stop at negative 2? Remember, you think of range is the set of all y values, right? So what is the lowest y value that this graph goes up to? Or I'm sorry, what is the highest? So you can see that the highest y value is when y equals negative 2. When y equals negative 2, there's a point, right? The x value is 0. But up here, is there any points on the graph when y is positive? There's no points. Remember, just always think range or domain is like all the values left and right, where range is all the values like up and down. OK? Wait, range, range, is, the, is, the range is your y values. Yeah.